Good afternoon. My name is David Heine, and today I've chosen to visit the Stedelijk Museum of Contemporary Art, where we're going to talk with Martin Berthau, the assistant director of modern art. We're going to visit a, an exhibit of four important Amsterdam painters from the late 19th, early 20th century. Many of these paintings have rarely been seen by the public. All of them are in the permanent collection of the Stedelijk Museum and are on exhibit right now uh, until the middle of February. So we'll now meet Martin. Martin, could you tell me how this exhibit came about and uh, why it's representative of uh, early 20th century Stedelijk? Well, uh, our museum is now 100 years uh, old and uh, this exhibition is uh, a group of artists, Breitner, Max, Sluiters and Gestel, who had been collected by uh, a group of uh, people in the city of Amsterdam who formed a foundation that uh, acquired works and that uh, group of works later came into the collection of the Stedelijk. And they are, um, some of them are more well known to the public. And we thought it was nice to do in the winter time an exhibition like this with uh, also an, uh, a painter like Max who is not so well known for the, the people. So they have a possibility to compare and see for themselves. Now Max, uh, you say, was not very well known, but he was... Uh as I recall, Breitner's only student, and was he influenced by Breitner? Yes, is certainly, uh, but he also went uh, to Paris, which was quite exceptional the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the majority of painters here. The atmosphere in Amsterdam at the beginning of the century was not that uh, uh, avant-garde like, like in Paris or maybe uh, Germany. So the first context, the, the, the artist who went to Paris and came in contact with the Fauvist uh, movement and later the, the Cubist and Futurist uh, movements, and they brought their, their, uh, their, their experiences back to, um, to, to, to Holland. It was important for development, for example, the development for a painter like Mondrian, now, they were associated, and I believe Mox was well accepted in Paris, and they were associated with a lot of the avant-garde there. How did that affect their life when they came back to Amsterdam and uh, the Stedelijk? Uh, well, the, the, was, uh, the Stedelijk was in that period important uh, because there was a group of artist um, uh, groups they formed groups, uh, and uh, these groups organized exhibitions here in the museum. So there was a kind of contemporary uh, exhibitions. And they also invited artists from uh, France or Belgium. And by that, uh, the public here could get in contact with the contemporary developments, with which even Apollinaire uh, made a remark on uh, when he visited Amsterdam and he mentioned that uh, the museum here was a possibility to see in a museum modern contemporary art which was completely an exception in a museum uh, at that time. So there was a, a kind of, of modernism uh, already here in the museum which is uh, after the Second World War became one of the most important things, the kind of relation this museum has with the contemporary. Now, the four artists themselves are related in, in what manner? Well, they all... Of course, there's a kind of, of difference in, in age by them. Uh, Breitner was uh, seen here as one of the most important uh, modern artists uh, by the public at that time here. And he um, 
came from The Hague, where he had been influenced by uh, other The Hague school painters who were more landscape painters. And he uh, developed himself a kind of style that was now called uh, uh, the Amsterdam Impressionism. Um, Max, as, I, as you said, was a pupil by, by Breitner, but he was more colorful after his visit to, to, to Paris. And Sluiters and Gestel also were more expressionistic, or Gestel more uh, turned, was, was influenced by Cubism and Futurism. But they all know each other in, in, uh, by these exhibitions that I mentioned. Uh, so it was a, a it was the Amsterdam milieu which they formed. Now the state lake at that time uh, was it part of the Rijksmuseum or part of that uh, idea? And how did it come to the idea of being a contemporary art gallery? Was it through these people? Well, the 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 the, the Rijksmuseum has was finished in 1885. And ten years later, the city of Amsterdam decided that it should be also a museum of the city. And from that time on, it was al always a, a city museum, a municipal museum, so what, which is called the Stedelijk Museum. Um, there was an idea to show uh, contemporary uh, and uh, to, to make acquisitions of, of art, so more modern art. And especially after 45, it became a policy to show modern art, which is which was in that time completely exceptional in Europe. Uh, the only example at that time was the Museum of Modern Art in New York. But this museum and maybe the Louisiana Museum in Denmark became really museums of modern art that also showed contemporary developments. Now, Max is the least known, I think, of the, the four artists, and yet he was well accepted in Paris yeah. uh, and other circles. Uh, what, what was uh, the controversy here in Holland? Um, well, Max was not seen as, as, a, as a more important artist like Breitner, and he had... Um, Max has has been shown in the uh, the Salon de Dotom in Paris, and he was even in a board, the selection board. Uh, I wouldn't say that that is the most uh, modernist and controversial uh, group of people, because at that time you already had the, the real avant-garde like Matisse and Picasso, uh, which was were making their works also beyond the, 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 the influence of the Salon d'Atom at that time. So, um, Max is um, more, has been as considered as, as a kind of outsider, uh, but still uh, an, a, a maître, an, an important uh, painter, but not that important as considered uh, has been considered Breitner and the room where we are here with uh, Jan Sluiters. Now Jan Sluiters seems to be getting a, a revival of sorts right now too. There's a big exhibit opening at the uh, Singer mm -hmm. Museum soon. What were his major influences? Did he stay in Amsterdam or? or yeah, or? all his life. He, he had been traveling to Paris in 96 and 99 where he had been uh, influenced by the, the futurist and the cubists, uh, but also has a, a, a brighter color uh, as, as Breitner. And the, um, this kind of forceful expressionistic uh, element became the, the major uh, influence to his work. You could say also even in the 50s he worked in that kind of manner. A realistic, expressionistic style, I would say. Now you told me that uh, his, his greatest fame really came in portraits and, uh, and his nudes, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, who was his main influence, do you think? Uh, um, 
I can't. Uh, it's not so easy to say. The, the news as as uh, and and portrait, which was also in that time quite uh, an, uh, an, an ideal uh, subject, which is, which is also the the, the subject uh, a very important subject for Breitner, which is also here seen in this exhibition. But as a to name special artists as an influence, I can't say. No. Yeah, he was associated with Van Dongen uh, to some degree. Right. The, the, the kind of expressionistic elements you could consider the Van Dongen as an influence. Sure, sure. I forgot that. <laughs> You're right. Well, there was also, uh, I think, a, a criticism about Marx, getting back to him a bit. Uh, that he achieved a lot of his fame in mm -hmm. circus paintings and then mm -hmm. later repeated them endlessly. Um, I notice you have some beautiful circus things. Is this kind of his specialty? Or? Yeah, uh, you could even, coming back to <coughs> Van Dongen, also Van Dongen has done a lot of uh, uh, theater uh, themes and uh, subjects. Um, so he he showed uh, the, 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 the let's say the the theater and uh, dancing hall uh, subjects. So so let's say the uh, the time of of leisure of people at that time in a big city like Paris. That was fas he, he was fascinated by that. Like like uh, also. Uh, Impressionists have been fascinated, like Manet, and by these kind of uh, subjects. So um, maybe that was rather unknown for the Dutch public. That that was not so. It was a different kind of of, uh, uh, of interest, maybe than than here in Amsterdam. Now he was something of a of a social painter too. He he liked to follow the latest trends and uh, and often we would see paintings that almost reflected the moment in time uh, with his paintings. Um, what was his uh, main calling in that area? Well, it is the same. I would I believe it is the same kind of of, of I ideal or. Or advice that uh, the Baudelaire uh, gave, the, 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 il faut d'être de son temps. Eh? So the idea of, of engagement of what is going around, uh, especially in a, in the modern cities, uh, with with uh, as well the when he painted the portraits of important people, and at the same time going to the bars and uh, portraying the. The, the, the people sitting in the bars. So that kind of doubleness is, is there, that kind of interest. I wouldn't say it is a, a, a typical social interest. It is more a kind of interest in, in modern life. Now, what I would like to do um, is maybe look at a few of these paintings together and uh, have you discuss the elements in them, if we could do that. This is a, a typical Amsterdam uh, situation. This is the Dam Square uh, at the beginning uh, or the, the end of the 19th century, where you see the, the horses uh, uh, of the pulling the, 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 the tram, um, the different kind of people going around. Uh, it is a late night. It, is, it has been raining. You see the, the reflection of the lights on the on the street and this is quite typical for for Breitner that he he choose um, uh, a kind of movement on the street a uh, different type of of people uh, it is very sketchiness in the way he he, he painted it so this is this kind of, of so-called uh, Amsterdam impressionism because it lacks the kind of colorness which is in the French impressionism, but it has this sketchiness and this um, interest in the the weather conditions and the light uh, reflections uh, on 
on different uh, areas in the in the painting. But it's at the same time it's a kind of, of strange painting because it is a kind of collage. It gives all kind of different type where the combination of things is not that uh, united in the most proper way, you could say. It's a very strange uh, things that he put together. Maybe it is also because he, he had been a, a photographer where he used for some of the photo photos for his paintings. So he would take photographs and then collect them in a, a way with images. Yeah, maybe he them. combined them in, in, his, in his studio and uh, made another, uh, another image. This, this is a very con contradiction that these, these faces are rather very strong, sketchy, sketchy way, and this is a very focused uh, image. So this kind of contradiction in the paintings uh, is at the same for in interest, but at the same time you're, you're, it's a confusion. He seemed always to pick an area in which he illuminated uh, that area with a in the darkness, this white in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, so the, the dark and light contrast are, are, are forceful. And um, where, he, where he really is, is the modernist, is, is this kind of sketchy way that he leaves. He really starts to, to consider the painting as, as, a, as a surface where the paint and the way the areas has been put together is not only related to the proper uh, depiction of, of everything, but he considers it at a painting where an artist expresses himself with the paint and the black and white contrasts. Now this was kind of typical of a lot of brighteners. He would use yeah. that illuminated mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. For example, we have the, the painting here, the, this, the other one. You see again, <laughs> this um, here in this uh, painting next to the to the other one, this is a, m a little bit more realistic. But again, you see this black and white is 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 interest in uh, the, the 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 snow, the the, the 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 cold atmosphere, but at the same time very lively and very uh, strong interest in. A Dutch canal uh, here. He was truly a, an Amsterdam painter, wasn't he? He expressed the turn of the century probably better than anyone. Yeah, so he he, he made a lot of images of of Amsterdam, and um, he, he he had also a kind of interest. For example, he also painted areas, uh, in new buildings uh, in, the, in the outskirts of, of uh, Amsterdam where he, the extension. So uh, the, 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 the dynamic element of the city was one of uh, his interests. And um, he was also a friend by a group of, of poets who also, and writers who were very much interested in the, the, the modern uh, city life. Something I've always been curious about. He doesn't seem to have had any production in the last 15 years of his life or something. What, what, what uh, Some, no, no, no. He, he, uh, he, he painted uh, very uh, lively, impressionistic uh, uh, paintings. In this uh, painting, what do we have uh, going on? Um, this is... Uh, Three young women on, on the on the boat on the ferry boat, and again here you have this this very sketchy way. So this is a very for for the for the Dutch public this seemed to be the most modern uh, kind of art that people could find at the beginning of this century here. A very loose way of painting, and it's a, it's a brilliant painting. It seems that his um, brush strokes are uh, just put on there with speed, uh, unlike all the, the very precise painters of that time. Uh, did this cause a lot of public concern, I guess? 
Yeah, he was. There, there were uh, people who who really admired him, but at the same time, there was a lot of criticism as well. By this sketchy way, it was still not uh, for the more traditional uh, taste at that time. It was a little bit too uh, controversial. Now, I believe that Breitner shared a studio with Max, is that...? Uh yes. Uh, and, and so Max, he was, uh, as a pupil, he, he took a lot of, uh, of this, this brushwork that he, he was in influenced by, by Breitner. Uh, but Breitner, and, uh, Breitner, who had been working at the beginning of his period when he was uh, before working in The Hague, he had been uh, making paintings and sketches in The Hague, together with Van Gogh. So, and, and there is also in, the, in the, the writing of Van Gogh, there's a remarks on Breitner that he, he, they, they knew each other. But of course, uh, Van Gogh made a total other direction in his development by the contacts with France. Uh, so that is a little bit strange for uh, the, the, our uh, understanding of the development of modern art, that the, the, the influence of, of, of France, for example, to, to uh, Van Gogh, for example, which, which was so important. And these influences were, so Amsterdam was still very isolated, you could say, in that respect. Because it was not colorful, it was not so uh, light as has been uh, done by the French Impressionists. Now here we are standing in front of a Mox painting that uh, seems to be a, a transition out of the Breitner uh, into his own style. Could you talk a little? Yeah, this is uh, after um, Amsterdam. He, he went uh, in 1906 to, uh, to Paris. Uh, where you see in this painting quite clearly the, 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 the brightness of the light. And at the same time, the brushwork is, is, you can see, is influenced by Breitner, the loose way. Uh, and, uh, but the whole scene, the, the, the park scene here, is a, a rather French atmosphere, I would say. Now we've moved into the room with Jan Schlöters and we're wondering, uh, he was very much influenced by the moment in Paris also. Uh, this painting we're standing in front of now, what, what can you tell me about that? Well, it is a, an, an, this, uh, maybe a, a very typical example of his uh, uh, use of, of an expressionistic, uh, colorful uh, way of, of painting, which is still a kind of uh, realism, so it is in, in effect a portrait uh, kind of approach, but at the same time the colors and uh, the, the, the leaving the reality also in, in a in kind of personal uh, forms uh, made this a very typical Sluiters uh, painting. Now it's a, uh, a black woman, and uh, in the twenties there was a, something of a <coughs> there was something of a, a rage or a, a keen interest in that in Paris, was there? Yeah, yeah, there is. A, but I would say this is a, the, the, that's right. But I was I was at the same time thinking of this kind of of uh, there is a kind of maybe kind of expressionistic uh, relation with the, the, the interest of a, a little bit more exotic kind of, uh, of, of, of women here, for that time anyway. Uh, and the, the, the nice thing of this uh, exhibition at the moment here, there are a lot of young uh, art students here who were struck by 
the 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 work by by Sluiters because this is not always hung here in the museum, but there are some elements in this kind of uh, painting, for example, which uh, makes it a very fresh and contemporary kind of uh, work. Now, as as you see, for example, the this this kind of of openness in in the the surface and this kind of red and yellow contrast uh, it makes it a very light and and, uh, and, and strong uh, contrastic uh, work now at this time he was in paris he was uh, much influenced by van longen they were friends i believe they they knew each other and have been been uh, exhibiting together. Yeah, they have been uh, exhibiting together, um, and it is the kind of of expressionistic, realistic uh, element. And as well, Sluiters as Van Donger were famous by their portraits. Yeah. Now this is the fourth of the painters. Uh, I'm, I'm least familiar with Castel. Yeah. And what was he influenced by? Uh, Castel also went with um, Sluiters to, to Paris. And they both experienced the, the, the contemporary art at that time in Paris. And Castel was more by, first he was influenced by the, the Luminists, by the post impressionist but later uh, was influenced as you see here uh, by the, the the cubist and even the futuristic style uh, so um, it is a kind of very colorful cubist way of, of, of painting um, it, the subject is still quite uh, recognizable uh, the, 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 the dancing uh, lady but is as you see it is a complete uh, other um, direction, as for example, let's say the the work uh, Verlana by by Max, which is much more related to the the, the Fauvistic style, and it was uh, more or less painted in the same time. So this kind of direction, this Cubist direction, when Gestel uh, came back to Amsterdam. And he exhibited together with Sluiters, but also with Mondrian, because they formed a kind of uh, painter's uh, uh, artist group, um, which exhibited here in the museum. Uh, Mondrian had been uh, influenced by Gestel. Well, Martin, thank you very much for talking with me today. And uh, it's been very informative. It's a beautiful exhibit. Okay. hope everyone gets to see it before it leaves. Thank you. Let me ask you one other thing before we go. If the people want to come out and see this, what are the hours here at the State Lake and how long will this show be? Uh, there is an uh, opening uh, time of uh, 11 until 5 and uh, we will have this exhibition until mid-February. Thank you again. Yeah, but because also it lacked here the the, the, the cubistic uh, uh, paintings. But if you if you if you know the story about the, the cubist in Paris, which weren't bought in Paris themselves, they were shown, but they weren't bought at that time. As you know, they were bought first in Russia by collectors there, 
who bought the first Cubist uh, paintings by Braque and Picasso. So there is always a kind of strangeness in that time, looking back. And the State League acquired these paintings through the years as part of their uh, commitment to modern art? Or? Yeah, because the, as I told earlier, the, 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 the group of, of, of uh, private collectors here in the cities, they formed a foundation with the idea to, to make a collection for the city of Amsterdam. The city wasn't able to have a budget for acquisitions uh, itself, so this was done by the, 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 the private collectors. And after the Second World War, the whole collection of this foundation was acquired and donated to the city. So that formed uh, one of the, 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 the major bases of our modern art collections. But it was not the most progressive uh, group of painters. For example, Mondrian was not uh, acquired. Uh, there was the group of Van Gogh paintings that came much later to this museum by the family of Van Gogh, but was not in the group of works that was bought by the inhabitants of Amsterdam. Well, Martin, thank you very much for talking with me today, and uh, it's been very informative. It's a beautiful exhibit. Okay. hope everyone gets to see it before it leaves. Thank you. Let me ask you one other thing before we go. If the people want to come out and see this, what are the hours here at the State Lake and how long will this show be? Uh, there is an uh, opening time of uh, 11 until 5 and uh, we will have this exhibition until mid-February.